You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, you know who I am. I am Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And I am so grateful and I feel so honored and privileged that you've made a decision to join me today. And I can say with all of the faith that's on the inside of me that I believe your life will never be the same again after listening to this recording. Well, how are you doing? I, I hope that you are making a decision uh, to really create a powerful day. And you know, it is a decision, right? Every day that you get up. Well, it is a cold uh, day here in Atlanta, but a sunny day. Uh, it has been relatively warm a lot of this week, but it is getting really, really cold and chilly in the morning. And then we usually have some sunny afternoons. Well, I have a great show in store for you, so I'm going to get right with it. Um, my very special guest is... Uh, you've heard him before. He is a law of attraction guru, uh, Michael Lozier, and he is going to be talking about the law of attraction and possibly about how to uncover your life's purpose. Uh, Oprah has interviewed him four times. He had a show on on her network, Oprah and F Friends. And uh, he really knows how to just break it down. I know how, I love how he just breaks it down in very simplistic ways and just shows you do number one, two, three, four. I think he's known as the how to guy. So uh, we, we are really blessed to have him today. Uh, I am still celebrating my birthday. Can you believe that you guys know I celebrate for 30 days? Thank all of you once again for the beautiful cards and, and emails that I'm still receiving. All of my friends, they love me so much. They gave me a all expense six day cruise to Cayman Islands, to Jamaica, Love my people in Jamaica and to um, Cozumel, Mexico. So that's where I'm going to be going over the next couple of weeks. And I am so, so grateful. You know, it is the holidays. So I'm going to, going to be giving you some tips about how you can really make a decision to enjoy the holidays and to look for the good. So Today, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to be grateful during the Thanksgiving season because in the U.S., uh, this upcoming week is Thanksgiving. So before I get to that, I want to remind you to go to my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Check out my products. Um, the best Christmas gift or the best holiday gift that you can give to yourself is to invest in yourself you know, to care for yourself, to mind your own business. And you can do that through coaching with me. You guys have already heard all of my clients through purchasing my products. Somebody sent an email and wanted to know if I could do a group. And I said, no, because my shows, I feel that my shows are mentoring tools and coaching tools that you can use. And so if you're not ready to coach, then get my book, Secrets of Success, man. It really teaches you how to go inside, how to make that shift, how to get clear about what you want and how to formulate your dream. And also while you own that page, I'm thanking you in advance for your uh, donation gift. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the holidays. You know, 
I tell you what, we have all kind of feelings during the holidays, don't we? So I just want to talk to you a little bit. Let me make a, a statement. You have to make a decision to look at the good that you do have, begin creating new memories for your life, and to be grateful for what you do have. So since it is Thanksgiving, I'm going to talk just a little bit about how you can really be grateful during the Thanksgiving holidays. And another word for Thanksgiving could be gratitude. And, you know, um, you guys know that the law of attraction says whatever you continually put your attention, focus and energy on, you're going to get more of that. So we're talking about doing the holidays. Where is your attention? Where is your energy and where is your focus? Because we know that from that place, you create a vibration. And if you keep thinking and saying and seeing and feeling the same thing, you're going to get more of that. So this is my tip for you. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, and I love it, Joshua 1, 8. You may want to check it out. It says that if you meditate, I'm paraphrasing, if you meditate on truth or meditate on this book uh, and let it come out of your mouth day and night, if you meditate and if you speak it out of your mouth day and night, then you will know what to do. And then it says something very powerful. It says, then you, not God, but then you will make your way prosperous and successful. So it looks like to me, what you meditate on, what you think on, and what you continually say out of your mouth, you make your way. You create a pathway to make your way prosperous and successful. So during Thanksgiving, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get out a piece of paper and I want you to write out as much, as many things as you can that you are grateful for. So when you do that, you are putting your attention, you're putting your energy and your focus on what you do have and what the good that is in your life and what you are grateful for. That sends out a vibration and you get more of that. So what you're going to do is you're going to use all of your senses. You're going to write it. Somebody says that when you write, it really shifts your subconscious. You're going to see it because you, you're writing it. You're going to see it. You're going to think it. You're going to speak it and you're going to feel it. And when you do that, you send out that vibration and more of that comes to you. For example, these are just six things that I wrote down. God, I'm so grateful for my listeners, for my extended family. You guys know that you're my extended family. Uh, I had a couple of tough days this week. I had a lot personally going on. And my um, Canada Inside Out group, I'm giving a shout out to you. I think they meet once a week and they listen to my recording. And I think Maria teaches. She started with eight women now I think it's 63 women come once a week or once every two weeks and they're listening to my podcast. And so one day last week, I'm talking about what I'm grateful for. She called me because I gave her my number and they were all calling to let me know how much they love me and appreciated me. You're talking about being thankful. Wow. So you're not just writing it down. So on that day, I really saturated my thinking, my feeling and my emotion in God. I am so grateful for all of my listeners. On my birthday, I felt just love from all over the world. Thank you for my extended family. You see the difference? So you're writing your gratitude list. 
The second thing I wrote was, I'm so grateful for the subdivision that I live in. There's such a connection in my subdivision. Uh, Before I moved here, I lived in a very affluent subdivision. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. It was all of that. But I did not feel the connection that I that I have here. So I am grateful for that. As I was walking this morning, all of my neighbors, good morning, Constance. How are you doing? Uh, My brother jokes about it because he said, you can't sit in my front yard without everybody waving at you. Okay, so as I'm walking through my neighborhood, I'm like, thank you, God, for my home and my neighborhood and my connection. You see the difference? You're not just writing out anything. Another thing, I'm grateful that I have divine health, that I can run, that I can walk, that I can, uh, that I eat healthy, that I have basically a stress free life. I mean, I have my days. I had a couple of days this week. You know, so I'm grateful for that. So I write it, I see it, I think it, I feel it. And the more I send that out, the more I send that energy out, the more that comes back to me. Another thing I wrote down is that I'm I, I, I'm grateful that I'm able to forgive and release. I used to pout if I was mad. I mean, man, I was mad. If you call me and, and said, hi, Constance, and I'm like, hello you know, kind of give you the cold shoulders that, you know, that I, that I uh, release people that I'm able to forgive and really, so I'm so grateful for that. So what's happening to my attention? Am I thinking about my circumstances? No. Am I thinking about what I don't have during the Thanksgiving season? No. Why? Because all of my energy, my focus, my attention uh, is going what on what I'm grateful for, and I'll get more of that. I thought about just the small things, my little sweet dog, Angel, how she's been healthy and happy. You know, dogs can be expensive, and I just was thanking God for her and how playful she is and how sweet she is. Just so grateful. And then uh, the last thing is for the divine relationship connections that I have. I mean, all of the wonderful people that I meet on the air, all of the connections that I've made because of this network. So so can you see how that when you begin to just be thankful during the holidays and you are writing it, you are seeing it, you are saying it, you're thinking it, you know, so while I was sharing with you, uh, my just my six uh, things that I have written down for my gratitude list. I'm sure that whatever issues you had going on in your personal life, you were completely immersed in what I was saying. You were saturated. Uh, you were uh, a part of. You were connected to my own life. So that's what I want you to do. Don't look at what you don't have. I don't have I don't have a boyfriend or I don't have family or I used to have. No, 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 no. We are focusing in on the good that we do have. We are giving that our attention. Uh, we are feeling that that is our focus. And the more we do that, the more it comes back to us. And of course, <coughs> All of you know that I'm so grateful for my relationship with God. That's that's first and foremost. So that is my tip for the week. What would happen in your life if you practice gratitude every day, twice a day? I understand now why all of the experts say that it's one of the most important things that you can begin to do to shift your life and to begin to create and manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. Wow, that's so good. I'm going to listen to it again myself. Hey, guys, stay tuned. Um, Thank you for telling me how much you like my new commercials. So um, we're going to go to these commercials and then I'm going to be right back with Michael. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Stay tuned. Are you planning a motivational or training event for your company or organization? Look no further. 
Constance Arnold is an experienced, dynamic, and inspirational speaker and trainer. Constance has helped thousands and has a proven track record of 25 years as a keynote and leadership trainer for both private and public sector. Constance provides the latest cutting-edge breakthrough transformational principles that will align with your organization's vision. Participants will receive specific how-tos for both personal and professional empowerment. Contact Constance and partner with her to begin creating your next successful event. Her website is www.fulfillingyourpurpose.com and email is Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Are you feeling stuck? Are you ready to live a life beyond your wildest dream? Constance Arnold is a seasoned and experienced professional licensed counselor for 25 years and a certified success life coach and would love to partner with you to create your dreams. She's coached and trained over 10,000 clients on five continents and has a proven track record of success. Constance will assist you in getting a clear vision for your life and develop customized strategies, projects, and action steps to begin manifesting your dream. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com and visit her website at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Well, I am back and I'm really, really excited about my call today. Um, we are so blessed to have Michael Lozier. He is a a best-selling author of so many books, The Law of Attraction, The Science of Attracting More of What You Want and Less of What You Don't, and The Law of Connection, The Science of Using NLP to Create Ideal Personal and Professional Relationships, and Your Life's Purpose, Uncover What Really Fulfills You. You know, Michael has been teaching The Law of Attraction since 1996, my goodness, and he caught the attention of Oprah Winfrey. We all know who she is. And, and she interviewed him four times on her Soul Series radio show on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. He really has it going on. And I can truly say that he is a law of attraction guru. And he's also uh, an emotional code practitioner. I'm really curious to hear about that. He's touched the lives of millions and I, I've been checking him out all week on the web and on social media. He has tons of information for folks all over the world. And we are blessed to have him. Michael, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Hey, Constance. Hello. And thank you for having me. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I know. I, I, I've been rehearsing your name all week. And so that was my <laughs> southern version of pronouncing uh, your last name. But I just wanted to tell you personally, uh, I said, wow, after just taking a look at all of the stuff that you've done and how you were just impacting shifting and changing the lives of millions. I just want to say thank you for what you have done, what you are currently doing and what you're going to do. Thank you. I had another trainer uh, use the expression, get in line and stay in line. Mm -hmm. And I've been in, I've been in the line for many years and I stayed in it and I got good at it. So uh, even with my other two books, I'm still in the same line, that line being helping people live rich, full, delicious lives with, you know, their own personal development using law of attraction, of course. Yeah. So you live in, for my international listeners, uh, in Canada. That's right. I'm on the west coast of Canada on a little island, not too far from Vancouver. So that's where you can picture me. <laughs> well, before we get started, there's so much I want to talk about with you, Mike. So what does it feel like to have accomplished, to have created, manifested, attracted all of the things that you are and that you have and all of the lives that you, what does that feel like? Well, that's an interesting question because you're using the word feel for me. And, you know, in my second book, I talk about the four learning and communication styles. Feeling is the last of the four for me. So I don't really feel about it. And that's not to discount, you know, how proud I am. But I like how it looks to me. Like, I really like pleasing people. I love, you know, one of my fulfillment needs is influencing people in a positive way. So when people ask me, how does it feel to be here? I always say, 
you know what? It looks great for me. You know, so wow. I, I, I know what you're asking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm very satisfied. And uh, and I'm certainly not done. You know, people say, what legacy do you want to leave? I said, I want to leave anything. I want to do it now. <laughs> I, I want know. to inspire and influence people right now. Don't wait till I'm gone. Do it now. So, you know, I could talk about the law of attraction, but what do you feel that people are really searching for, Michael? What What are you teaching now? And, uh, and share that with our listeners. Right. Well, you know, law of attraction, you know, my book came in two, 2003. So you, you only have to do the math to know it's old. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 13, <laughs> 14 years old. I sold uh, 2 million, 8, 2.8 million copies in 37 languages. Wow. And it's, and it's still selling really well all over the world. So there's more people that don't know about law of attraction that do. And the people that do know about it still are confused about how to apply it. And I'm the how to guy. So you that are. means I'm still teaching. I'm still certifying trainers on how to teach it. There's a huge demand for people to learn how to apply it. But all the time in the last 13 years, I've been mentoring and coaching and supporting people. And the reason why a lot of people turn to law of attraction is because they're not happy. Right. You know, they're not getting what they want. So I taught them that. Well, here's how you can get what you want. What? You're still not happy? <laughs> Even after I'm teaching you how to get what you want, you got more money. You said you wanted that. You want a better relationship. You wanted an ideal job. And you're still not happy. So I was on the side, you know, before my last book came out, teaching people about being fulfilled. Huh. Now that was that's a foreign word to some people. Yeah. First, the notion that you can be fulfilled. So, you know, uh, for the last six years, I've been writing my book. I, I initially called it Fulfillment Needs. Well, it's called now it's called Your Life's Purpose. So what I teach people is that I teach people about well. Most people know the expression about not being fulfilled. You know, that's a pretty common. But the notion of being fulfilled kind of makes people tilt their head a little bit. It's yeah. Like, really? I can be fulfilled? So I like to think that I know the purpose of everybody's life. <laughs> and some people would say, well, how can you know that? Because my purpose is to be a singer or a dancer or a teacher or a healer or a mother or a doctor or a lawyer or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a healer. I'm thinking, well, that's not your purpose. That's your strategy to get your purpose met. Hmm, hmm. What's up with that? So in my book, Your Life's Purpose, because, you know, I've worked with th hundreds of thousands of people and particularly one on one on this subject. They would always come to me and say, I think the purpose of my life is to be a teacher or a healer or a mother or a seminar leader or a radio host. And like an onion, I would take I would strip down the layers of that. And in the very inside of the core, I always found the same thing. And it's not to be a teacher or a mother or a healer or a doctor or a cab driver. And the core of everybody is the purpose in life is to experience joy. Mm -hmm. So the real question is, what brings me joy? What fulfills me? So people say, well, being, you know, being a dancer fulfills me. And I said, yeah, being a dancer fulfills your fulfillment needs and when your fulfillment needs are met then you experience joy it's like an onion the outside layer is what your fulfillment needs are and and once you once you get those met then the very core the target is that you can feel joy so it's a paradigm shift for a lot of people to hear this it is that the, that the purpose in your life is to feel joy it's like some people still deny that and say no this is all my mine's to be a painter and i say no it's not the, being a painter is your strategy to get your needs met. Hmm. Because people that are dancers, they can be other things. You can, you can have multiple strategies in your life to get your needs met, like I do. I'm a writer. I'm a, a talk show host. I do Facebook Live once a week. I do book signings and seminars and keynote speeches and conferences. And I do all of that stuff. Why? Because it's strategies to get my fulfillment needs met. Hmm. And and so, you know, you and I both know that people are like, you know, what's my purpose? And you said to find joy. And as you were just sharing everything that you do, I was thinking about my own life and, you know, what brings me joy. So for listeners out there, what would be like a beginning point for them to 
begin to take a look at maybe living more in their life's purpose or experiencing that more? Okay, thanks. In my book, I start off with 30 fulfillment needs. They're just a list of needs. Everything from attention to autonomy, to acknowledgement, to recognition, to fun, to freedom. There's a list of 30 of them. They can actually get the list for free on, online. So there's a list of 30 needs. And my book walks people through the process. It's like, it's, like, uh, it's like a reality show. At the end of the process, the top four in this list will surface. Mm. And as you go through all the processes, you eliminate them. So, for example, there's a list of 30. I might say to you, so is control one of your fulfillment needs? And you, you would say, you know, no. no. It's not one for me. Good. So now we're down to 29, right? Mm -hmm. So the very first exercise, there's five steps. The very first exercise is to reduce the list of 30 and you find out the ones that do not resonate with you. Now, just by talking to you really briefly, I might suggest that these might be some of your needs. Now, remember, I've been doing it for years. I also wrote a book on Law of Attraction and NLP, so I've been listening to your language. My hunch is some of these might be your fulfillment needs. One of them might be community. Absolutely. That's right. So community is important to you. So how do you do that? Well, you're creating it on your radio show. You probably belong to communities. You probably host a community, right? Because that's a very kinesthetic thing. I heard you use the word feeling a lot. So people that are kinesthetic, community is very important to them. Another fulfillment need on here would be the word inclusion. You like to be included. Ab absolutely. In that. That's right. So how are you inclusion? Well, you're one of the hosts on the network, right? So you're getting your inclusion needs met. You're getting your community needs met. And let's just play. My hunch is fun would be important and value for you. Yay! <laughs> yeah. So... Like, you know, and I know I'm doing the process quite fast. And remember, I'm, I wrote three books on the subject, so I'm a good listener, too. So I would suggest that when you can have fun, inclusion, and community, you're in. I'm in. I'm you in. are in. You read chapter one of my life because I did. it's so interesting because communication and and. The community that I live in, I moved from a very, what some people would think a very, which it was affluent, whatever part of town in Atlanta, to the community that I live in because it has like just 30, 30 houses. And every day I say, God, thank you for my community. Every day when I walk, when I yeah. sit outside, everybody waves and say, hey, Constance. You know, and every day I say that. So community and, and inclusion. I like to include all people, all faiths, all ways of thinking. Yeah. So well, you, you read the first chapter of my book, Michael. Wow. Well, I think, now remember, I start off with 30. The idea is to narrow it down to the top four. I think I have another one for you, too. Okay. Connection. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, connection. So, Constance, can you remember a time in your life, a job that you had in the past? where none of these were present? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, how, and were you experienced joy at the time? No, I was working for corporate America behind a computer, and yeah. I cried every day in the commute. That's right. So in my book, I talk about, the, the, now this is how we test them. I just didn't okay. guess these. These have a lot. I was listening to you. So, so the test would be, was there a time in your life when these were, were not present? And when they're not present, you're bored or you're frustrated or you're not being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And the other question is, is there a time in your life when they were present, like right now? Yes. And, are you, and, and, and when you get them met. So one thing is, when were they missing and when are they met? And when they're met, you're feeling joy and that means you're fulfilled. And probably without knowing it, these are your yardstick for you to say yes or no to something. So true. Because before you and I started talking, you know, we we were trying to connect and I had to reboot my com, com, uh, computer. And I said to you, how are you doing? And uh, you said, uh, you said, I'm doing good. I got to have a busy day. And I said, I did, too. But it's been a fun, exciting, interesting, busy day. Yes. Fun. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. 
because I've been connecting and meeting you and learning from you. So that is so I love the way you just break that down and peel it like an onion for people to really see, you know, what their life purpose is. Wow. Yeah. And I'm sure you're you're getting all of those needs met hosting this show. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And if it wasn't fun and if you couldn't connect with people and you couldn't build this community, you'd be doing it for the money. And that's what people do. They do stuff for the money. But money's not a need. Oh. Money is supposed to be a strategy to get your needs met. So I want to tell you what my four are. Okay. Remember, remember what I said. I love to be on stage. I love to do seminars. I love being interviewed by Oprah four times. I had my own radio <laughs> show on her channel, book signings. Uh, I do presentations in Victoria once. I'll go anywhere. I'll go to a church. I'll go to a coffee shop. It doesn't matter the size. I'll just go. So here's my top four. Okay. Attention. Mm. Influencing people in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Intimacy. Now, intimacy means this. Into me see because i don't know how to talk about the weather or sports <laughs> or, or cars but if we are intimate you and i are intimate into me see i'm letting you into me to see and you're letting me into you to see if it doesn't have that kind of conversation or connection i'm not interested yeah and the last one is freedom mm. so look at all the things that i'm doing to get those met you know, for 204 Fridays, I've been hosting a Facebook Live show. I also host one on Saturday. People say, wow, that's a lot of work. It isn't when you get your needs met. Yeah. Book signings, presentations. I travel the world giving conferences and train the trainer. Why? I get my needs met. But if you were to say, hey, Michael, there's a crane operator job. You could double your salary. <laughs> uh, would I get my needs met working in a crane operator? I don't think so. <laughs> No, oh, but, but him or her that's doing that, maybe their needs are control, autonomy. Oh, what an autonomous job that is. You don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. Control, autonomy, maybe order and function. And, and, and people say, oh, how could you do that job? It's like, well, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. So, and, you know, even writing my book, I would, I would talk to taxi drivers that love their job. I would say, what do you like about the job? And, and they would say, Oh, I just like I just like connecting with people. I'm I'm curious. I love learning more about people. And then but if they didn't like their job, I would hear and they say, What I really want to be doing is but ones that really love their job is because they were getting it met. So it's not about the money. It's nice if you can get paid well to get your needs met, of course. And so, Michael, if you know, you, you hear this more than I do, probably. But, you know, people say, I want to find my purpose so I can make m more money. So somebody who's on like a, just maybe a mundane, what they consider to be mundane nine to five, you know, commute there and back. Can they find their life's purpose outside of work? Yeah, well, that and well, they can also attract. So he, this is such a good point. When I wrote my book, the very last chapter was now, now that you know, how do you apply law of attraction? Right? I mean, I had to, I had to marry all three. Yeah. So in, in, in and so what I in my book, I talk about the desire statement. Now, a desire statement is a statement about your desire which causes you to give attention, energy, and focus to something. So here's my example of my desire statement. Remember my four needs? I would say, I'm in the process of attracting the allowing, whatever I need to do or know or have, so I can get my attention, my intimacy, my freedom, and influential needs met. I love doing jobs and things that allow me to get people's attentiveness and to inspire people in a healthy way. I love the thought of traveling the world to get my four needs met. In other words, I would create the vibration of getting those four needs met and make money at the same time. Michael, this is so awesome. I mean, you're a how to a how to kind of guy. I love that about you. Yeah. And and the way you break it down is just so powerful for people to really comprehend and implement it in their lives. Thank you. Wow. That's yeah. powerful. So you integrated the law of attraction. And the NLP part, because, you know, the NLP part, I'm talking about the four uh, learning and communication styles. So 
when I knew that you were kinesthetic, well, I knew control wasn't going to be important to you, but I knew connection would be and community would be. You know, people that are auditory, for example, you know, uh, some of their needs are uh, acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. They like to be acknowledged. And you know what? You know what word they like you to use? The word acknowledge. (laughs) The word acknowledge. One of my dear friends, she's she's probably my age. She's in her 50s. And uh, when I was writing my book one day, she and I had it all laid out on my table and she came over for lunch and. We were having a conversation, and she said, well, what, what are you working on? She was very curious. She's a writer. Oh, that's, is that a clue? Mm-hmm. She's, she's also a proofreader. Is that another clue of her style? Mm-hmm. And she doesn't want, uh, she doesn't want to, to text or anything. She wants to talk. So I knew she was auditory because she's my friend, and I can, I can detect people right away. So I walked through the process with her. In about a half hour, I said, I think, well, I knew before I started because she was my friend. But I said, I think I found out your top need. And I said, you're not going to like it. You see, when people uncover, like when I found out my top need was attention, I hated it. I was embarrassed. But you know what? When I was young, I'd do anything to get it. Hmm. I was a show off. I was a class clown. I demanded people's attention. When I was younger, I got it met in a destructive way. Mm-hmm. That as an adult, I get it met in a constructive way. So I said to her, my friend, her name's Janet. I said, so Janet, I think your number one uh, fulfillment need is acknowledgement. And she turned beet red. And, she, and I said, what's going on with you? She said, my husband, she's divorced many years. She said, I remember my husband saying to me this. She goes, do I have to throw you a bone every time you do something and need to be acknowledged? Huh. And, and that shut her down. Yeah. So she's had a really negative experience around being acknowledged. And I was the first person that gave her permission to say, that's important to you. And you insist yeah. on The challenge, however, is to do something that can get that need met constructively. So you're not sniffing around people waiting to get acknowledged. You do stuff. You And she's, you know, she's a writer. She's an editor. She blogs. She does all kinds of great stuff with her writing. And people love her stuff. And they said, oh, I love your article. And now she sits back and said, I'm being acknowledged. So I gave her permission to own that, not to change it, not to hide it. Hmm. So it sounds like that, you know, there's a lot of healing and, and, and enlightenment that's happening, you know, when people read your book, Michael. Oh, yes. Um, you know, I've been even some of my hangout shows, I have people that join us and they're they are thrilled to know, particularly couples. Right. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine her husband, if he knew that if he wants to have a great relationship with his wife, we have to do things to appease them, period. Right. Yeah. You know, I was and, just I was just thinking about why wow, I was a marriage therapist for years. I was just thinking about why wow, this would really be great for couples because they would really recognize you know, the need, that need and that gift. If you flip the coin, that's what it is. That's right. Even if it wasn't your word, which it usually isn't because everybody has. But and you thought and, and you know, your spouse was uh, doing something. You said, hey, you know what? I just want to acknowledge what a great job you did. Even if that's not a sentence you use, what a great way to connect with somebody. What a, uh, You know, instead of denying them that. Wow. Yeah. You know, and same with me. You know, I, I like for I like. I like to have people's attention. If you and I are having a conversation and you're on your, your texting or on your cell phone, um, then I don't have your attention and you're going to break rapport with me and not you, but other people. And, you know, once people break rapport with other people and it takes a second to, to, to build it. Yeah. It takes a second to break it and it can take forever to repair it. Yeah. So if somebody breaks rapport with me because I'm not getting their attention or, or, or they're late or something like all of that's all it's it's all it's all attention breakers for me. So a good a good spouse for me would give me their attention and I would serve them by finding out, well, what are your needs? What do you need to have? Mm-hmm. Well, wow, this is great. Yes. You know, this is so great. So when you're writing, uh, you feel like that you are communicating with people. Or in the process of is is that is that what's happening? No, not for me. Okay. 
for me, I feel like I'm influencing them. Influencing. Okay. Because that's, right, that's one of my needs. I like to influence some people, some people in a positive way. When somebody wants to interview me and they say this, so tell me about your your history. I'm thinking, oh, really? That's not <laughs> going to But you know what? What you're doing is perfect because I'm influencing people. But to sit here for 40 minutes and tell you how I got started, that's not going to influence any. I want, that's why I'm called the how-to guy, right? Yeah, how's that are. How's that for influencing people? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I'm influencing people, then I'm feeling good and I'm feeling good. I'm getting my needs met. When I'm getting my needs met, I'm a happy camper. And that's the purpose of my life. I'm selfish enough. And selfish means self-care. I'm selfish enough only to do things that get my needs met. Hmm. That's so true. So when people read your book, I'm going to buy this, by the way, uncover. So they're uncovering what really fulfills them. So it's like a process that they're going through as they're reading. Is that right? That's right. All, you know, all of my books are, the, are all the same. They've got steps and sequences and here's do this. You know, my book, uh, you know, when we talk about the secret, you know, the secret was very inspirational, mm -hmm. but it wasn't very educational. And my book is opposite. It's not very inspirational. It's all education. There's no stories in my book. It's all nuggets. <laughs> you know. And you know, and I my, also, and you know, Michael, I, I have used, I have used what you say. You know, when you find out what you don't want, then you know what you do want. I have used that maybe a hundred times <laughs> with people. I remember, and I love how you teach people the how tos instead of just lecturing and information. Yeah. Like everywhere I go, everybody wants to attract this and attract that. And I said, well, you can't do that. So you stop attracting negative things. Mm -hmm. And I teach people how to stop attracting negative things. This is important. I don't teach people how to be positive. That's natural to them. Mm -hmm. What I teach people is how to be less negative. You see, the best way to become more positive is to become less negative. We're already positive anyway. It's like an onion. It's all buried in the core. We need to remove the layers of the negativity. And when we do that, it's like a lotus flower. When we remove all the negativity, what pops up is the positive. So I'm not teaching you how to be positive. I'm teaching people how to be less negative. What words are you using? What thoughts are you thinking? How do you reset all that? So I, teach good. To, I don't tell them what to do. I tell them how to do it. Yeah. And so, you know, you, I, I see you on Facebook and you got tons of stuff on YouTube. Yes. And, and, and so people can, you know, really check you out. Um, I, I want I want to talk a little, shift a little bit and talk about your new body emotional code program. Yes. Or emotional coding. What in the world is that, Michael? And what would that look like? Well, people? the emotion code is developed by Dr. Bradley Nelson. Mm -hmm. And the premise is, is that. Uh, we have a lot of unprocessed negative emotions. When people talk about having chronic pain in their neck or their hips or their lower back, that chronic pain is actually an unprocessed negative emotion. Now, most people are used to hearing the expression, oh, I, I've got stress. I've carried stress in my back. Well, it's not stress. There's 60. There's 60 possible negative trapped emotions that are stuck in different parts of your body. So the emotion code is removing these negative trapped emotions and it's done through a practitioner and it's done through muscle testing and a magnet. So the practitioner, which would be me, would talk to your subconscious mind and become your proxy. You would say, Michael, you have my permission. Add muscle test. If you can pretend there's like a little telephone line between you and I, mm -hmm. you know, the expression where, where we say everyone's connected. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true. We all are connected. You and I have a little tiny telephone line connecting each other. So you would say, Michael, I give you permission. So I would use muscle testing. I would tap into your subconscious mind and I would ask it, which of these 60 trapped emotions are causing my neck pain or my sinus congestion or my headache or my heartburn or my tingly feet or my constipation or my illness or my sickness or the ringing in my ears? Everything that isn't natural to your body is caused by an unprocessed negative emotion. Every Saturday, my friend John and I, we're both Emotion Code certified practitioners. Mm -hmm. We do a live Facebook show, just him and I on the show. And we are removing trapped emotions from viewers. And here's some of the things we've done so far. 
Well, the, in the last couple of months, uh, last month, we did Halloween candy. We removed the desire, the need, the trigger for p- two people live on the air, and they haven't had Halloween candy once. Wow. We've, I know. We've helped people remove the trapped emotions that are causing addictions. We remove trapped emotions that cause people to have seasonal allergies, headaches, heartaches, broken hearts, back pain, neck pain. So every week we do a different subject, and him and I, we're demonstrating and showing people how we're using the emotion code. We have a magnet, and you can see us remove that. And then people, they're not even on the line. They're just chatting with us live. And uh, two weeks ago, I worked with a woman from Iran. Wow. She, she had a stiff neck. She's, she's a viewer. She's watched me 25 times. And she said, oh, please, can you help my neck? So I got her permission. I found out where the pain was. I removed five unprocessed negative trapped emotions that were in her neck. And for the first time in three years, she was able to move her neck from side to side and left to right. Wow. I know. So it's called distance healing. And that's, I gave you that example on purpose because that was a distance. And so, and so Michael, would you say that all of these emotional uh, codes that we've been programmed writ- with are really like barriers to keep folks from manist- manifesting and they creating. Are. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly. Well, you know the rule about law of attraction. You can wish and want all you want, but if you have doubt, which is a negative vibration, that doubt dilutes the positive vibration. So on one hand, you know, because I'm a big guy, on one hand I said I wanted to have a happy, slender body. I tried everything. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I had all these unprocessed negative trapped emotions that were preventing me from exercises and causing me to be addicted to food and other things. Once I get rid of those, then I was able to manifest what I want. The reason why we don't manifest what we want is because of doubt and negative trapped emotions. And both of them are negativity that are diluting the positivity of our desire. And so you, on your website, I, I noticed that you have new body emotional code program. So would that be for someone who who wants to release weight or stop eating so much chocolate? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, it, you know, it's a five day program and I have seven people on the call. It's like a video call and they each get 10 emotion code sessions. So I remove all their beliefs. And is it OK for me to lose weight? Is it safe for me to lose weight? Am I worthy of losing weight? Am I worthy of having my ideal body? They're all no, no, no. They're all beliefs that we form between the ages of one and six. So I identify using the chart what trapped emotion is causing that belief, and then I remove it. Then the next class, I do anxiety. What is my level of anxiety around losing weight? Oh, it's a 10. And I find out what unprocessed negative emotions are causing it, usually five or six of them, and get it to a zero. And then during the five calls, people bring up to 10 food items, Hmm. chocolate, chips, French fries, bread, wine, potatoes, uh, soda pop, whatever, whatever their nemesis is. And I find out the trapped emotion that's causing that addiction and delete it for it. And they don't have it ever, ever, ever again. I've helped people. I started this program in April. I helped people. One woman, I nicknamed them. This, her, this one her name is called Barb Toast and Jam. You can figure out, you can figure out what her did. How about Lorraine Licklish? Uh-huh. Right? How about Cindy Candy Corn? Can you figure out? <laughs> that is right? so funny. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm funny. So, so I'm helping people remove these foods forever. And I have a, an emotion code Facebook group where all my clients and people that we help are in there. And they're still they're saying, I. You know, some people say, I, one Debbie Klondike bar, she used to buy them by the case, case of 24. So we call her Debbie Klondike. She, she threw out a, a box of those a month later. She kept them in her freezer. Hmm. She said, I'm, I'm not going to throw them out. And then I had a woman that had uh, uh, um, mints, little, little mints. She would have a bowl of them in her house and go through a bowl a day. Yeah. Since. So. Everybody has their own little, uh, and I find out what the trapped emotion is that's causing that. I also have a money program, the same same style. It's a five day program. Yeah, you know, talk, got, talk about money, Michael. Go ahead. Well, money is the same thing. We have a lot of beliefs about money. We also have a, a money ceiling. You know, 
is that we, we, we make so much money and then we can never get over it. You know, we, we, we start to make money and then there's a bill that comes up where we have to spend it somewhere. We can never get beyond that money ceiling. And that money ceiling is caused by negative trapped emotions from you and your parents that were inherited. So I use the emotion code to find out what's the, what is the negative trapped emotion that's stopping me from making more money or getting more clients or going beyond my current ceiling. People have a lot of anxiety about money. You know that with law of attraction, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if people want to attract more money. They say that in their words, but their vibration is completely opposite. The only way to attract anything is to remove the vibration that's diluting the attraction. And it's usually, uh, it's usually anxiety, it's usually guilt, and it's mostly beliefs about money. Oh, money, you know, money's evil. Well, I remove that belief from people. Money, money makes people turn mean. You know, money creates problems. Imagine on one hand, you want to attract money, but you've got all these undercurrent vibrations running along. I even, there's even a section in the money class where I remove people's blocks that where people owe them money and then people pay them back without ever calling them again because people have a lot of doubts and beliefs about that. So money is a big subject. Well, it is. It's the number one question that I get from listeners from all over the world. And of yeah. course, the second one is attracting love. Yeah. How can money they bring love jobs? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's another process that John and I did on our Saturday. It's called the heart wall. And it is the same, you know, the 60 trapped emotions I talked about. Mm -hmm. It's trapped emotions that you, we protect our heart with past based on past relationships. So when I do a session, I can identify the year of the relationship. And what trapped emotions you got? Was it abandonment or betrayal or forlorn or lost or un love unreceived or insecurity or vulnerability? And these trapped emotions are protecting people's heart and it's stopping them from sending and receiving love. And through the session, I identify what they are and I remove the magnet and people literally can feel the difference. They feel a lightness. There's all kinds of words. Say, wow, I'm feeling so light right now. And then things happen to them. People treat them differently. They respond to them differently. They feel differently around other people. And they're all caused by previous negative um, uh, emotions that people have. People, a lot of people know about their old baggage, too. They'll even come yeah. and say, I had a horrible job, and I know it, it, um, you know, it scarred me. And then I, I'm, then I can say, well, let me check, and I'll, I'll know which trapped emotions got lodged when they got fired or when they had an accident, or when they had an operation. Wow. So powerful. Thank you. So um, I want you to share with people how they can connect with you. No, I had to use that word. I mean, Facebook, everything mm -hmm. that you have, any upcoming events, any specials that you have, etc., all of the above. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, one of the best ways to get a hold of me is to go to my webpage. And on my webpage... Uh, it's hangoutwithmichael.com. Mm -hmm. So it's hangoutwithmichael.com. Everything's there. All my things about law of attraction, about the NLP. People can go take the assessment for free. They can go download the 30 fulfillment needs list for free. And on the very last tab at the top, it says live shows. So you can go look at all my law of attraction Facebook live shows and all the emotion code shows and uh, go check it out. It's um you know, it's it's so fulfilling for me because I am influencing people in such a profound, positive way. And when that happens, I'm on fire. Yeah, I, I can tell. I feel your enthusiasm, even, you. you know, doing this interview. I mean, you're excited, you you know, you're focused, et cetera. So so yeah. what's what's in the future for you? What do you what do you got coming up, Michael? Well, it's it's interesting when I get asked that question uh, a little bit differently. People say, where do you want to be in five years? And I always say this. I want to be feeling better or the same as right now. I, I love don't, that. doesn't matter what I'm doing as long as I'm getting my needs met. Because I didn't know I'd be doing the – well, first I didn't know I was going to write a third book. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know I'd be doing the emotion code. But the question is, are they making me feel better than I did before? Yes. Am I getting my needs met? Yes. So – I, I do have a I do have a reality show in my head, an idea mm. that would really be fulfilling. And it would be me on the streets. Mm. And I and I would have a host with a camera crew. And we'd be going on the streets and I would be looking for people in pain, people limping, people hunched over, people in a lot of pain. 
and I would stop them on the streets and I'd introduce myself and I would do a live emotion code session in the middle of the busy street sidewalk and I would remove all the trapped emotions and they would walk away healed. Wow, that that's real time. And, you know, you're so great with people and you're funny. You know, you have a great sense of humor and you connect with people easily. Uh, I, I could see that. And I, I think that in real time that people, you know, everybody, you know, wants joy and purpose in their life. That's what, like you said, people are looking for, searching for no matter where they live. Yeah. Uh, about a month and a half ago, I was in Las Vegas and I did a big seminar. I was, uh, there was four or five speakers and I did the emotion code on stage and I, I brought people up one at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the guys that I brought up was the cameraman because he was, I kept saying, he kept raising his arm and stretching it. And I said, Hey, um, I was on the break. We wasn't filming anything. Tell me about your arm. He said, he goes, Oh, he goes, my arm's been sore for about seven years. Mm -hmm. So I called on him. He didn't know. Right. I said, Hey, cameraman, come up. I want to fix your arm. So I fixed his arm in front of everybody, and, he, and then the next day, the producer called me, and he said, the cameraman called, and he said, you have a reality show waiting to happen. Wow. He said, he's been filming in Las Vegas for 28 years, and he never saw what he saw yesterday. And, oh. he, woke up, and he woke up thinking, and he moved his arm, and he said, oh, my God, it's still gone. And he said, this guy, could be, this guy could have a show. He could stop traffic. And you know I could pull it off, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you you are definitely the man. Wow. What Thank a you. gift you are to the world. You. you know, I was so excited about this interview all week and just so grateful, as I said earlier, for what you have done, what you are doing and and, and what you're going to do. And um you're just a a blessing to the world and I thank you for for um, the inner work, I don't even like the word work, but the inner enlightenment uh, that occurred first on the inside of you and then you're sharing it, sharing it with the world. Yes, thank you for the acknowledgement. You're so welcome. Okay, everybody. Well, this is Constance Arnold. You can visit me at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Uh, email Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And as I say every week, you may not know it or feel it, but you are surrounded by the love of God. You know that I'm crazy about you and that I love and care deeply for you. And always remember this. All things are possible. Expect it and believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. My heart skips skipping a beat. You're not close enough, so that space between you and me, let's lose it. The way you're dancing, swaying to the music, girl, that body and how you move it. Every time you cross my mind, girl, I lose it. Alexa, play the Country Heat playlist. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today.